Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So as you all know that the CSI NET exam has been postponed for few days and new dates are also announced. The exam is now going to be conducted on 25th to 27th of July. So that means we have roughly around 20 to 22 days for the exam and now I'm going to talk about that how you can utilize these days in the best way possible so that it can help you ensure good marks in exam. All right. So this video I have thought to make in two series or two parts in the first part, which is this video, I'm going to talk about that. What are the things that you can do within these 20, 22 days uh, regarding your preparation? Like what are the things that you can do extra that can make sure that you get good marks in exam? And the second part, we'll talk about that. What are the things that you should take care and what are the things that you should do in exam? Uh, while sitting in the exam that can help you boost your marks okay so that's how we are going to talk about that video will be uploaded a uh, quite near to exam so stay tuned for that and subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it yet so talking about that what are the things that you can do to ensure good marks okay so first of all see csi net exam you all know it has three parts part a part b and part c part b and part c is for your subject if you are a chemistry student part b and part c will contain chemistry questions Part B, two marker questions, part C, four marker questions, part A will have aptitude questions. Now, it is very important to have good knowledge of aptitude. At least you should be able to do five to ten questions of aptitude because leaving aptitude will not help you in any way. You are just ignoring 30 marks in the exam. Remember that in part A, you, you can do 15 questions out of 20 uh, and those 15 questions are going to carry two marks each. That means you can gain 30 marks from part A, which is a big number. So I would recommend and I would encourage you to prepare for aptitude part. For that, you can join our uh, question bank series for aptitude. You can practice over there. And there are a lot of questions from a particular topic. And we have also started our aptitude series for CSI net on YouTube also. So you can follow that also. All the link are there in the description and also in the I button. So you can watch those videos and you can follow the question bank. Question bank will have uh, questions like a lot of questions from a single topic and then detailed answers of that. So that will make sure that you understand how to solve such questions and it will give you a good confidence when you sit in the exam. All right. The second thing which you can do apart from aptitude is that you have to analyze your mistakes which you are doing, especially when you are giving mock tests. So I think by now you have already appeared for a lot of mock tests. If not, I would recommend you to give at least one or two mock tests, good mock tests which have you know full length mock test which can give you a good idea about your preparation and how much you have prepared for it. So full length mock test and whenever you are giving a mock test the best way of doing it is to make a pseudo exam like a condition. I mean you have to sit in a room, you have to set up your uh, timer and you have to sit for three hours continuously just like you sit in the exam and try to solve questions of the mock test like that. In that way, you will be able to get confidence that the time is sufficient for you in the exam and you will be able to manage time in the exam also. Like you will learn how to manage time. So time management is also one important thing, which we will talk about in detail in the next part when I will upload it near to the exam. But right now you have to manage your time for the mock test also and you have to set up in a way that you are close to finish all the questions, all the required questions uh, for the exam, uh, like in the mock test before three hours ends. Okay. So time management also you have to learn according to the mock test. You have to practice more and more so that you fall within those three hours and you get uh, like you make sure that you are not very slow in solving questions. Okay. At the same time, you have to analyze your mistakes from the mock test. As I said, the first benefit of mock test is to make sure that uh, like you are managing time well, you are on time and you are utilizing each and every portion of the exam or each and every section of the exam and within a particular interval of time. So time management is the first thing which you should learn from mock test. And the second important thing which which the mock test helps you is to understand your weak points or your uh, like missing blocks. That's what I call. So if you are preparing for let's say if you have prepared let's say chemical kinetics you have already prepared but when you sit in the mock test there was a question from transition state theory and there was certain thing which was asked which you don't know let's say there was something asked about activation activated complex and the uh, degree of freedom according to that and you have never heard about it or you have not studied about it so when you have given mock test you can go back to your notes or go back to the books and try to look upon that particular topic and try to learn upon that so that will make sure that that missing block from your chemical kinetics is now filled and in that way 
with the help of mock test you will be able to get more confidence and you will be able to fill up these blocks and eventually when you sit in the exam you will be able to solve questions related to that so these things you have to do in these days you have to fill up these blocks whatever missing blocks are there you have to find them and that you will find by giving mock test once you give a mock test you uh, find out the mistake you find out the missing thing or missing concept or missing topic from your preparation go back and prepare that okay and the third and most important point for this particular video is that you don't have to study everything okay you don't have to include each and every see the syllabus is vast and the csr net exam is not an exam where you have to solve each and every question you have a lot of options you have a lot of you know uh, like from a particular section let's say part c has total 60 questions out of those 60 questions you have to only do 25 questions from part b you have 40 questions out of those 40 questions you have to do only 35 questions so the the csr net exam is not only about uh, like solving question it's also about making decision that which question you have to choose and which question you have to leave so in that sense i would suggest always that don't study everything the more you will study the more you will get confused in the exam you will be thinking about that what should i leave what should i choose like sometimes i have seen students they have done they know 30 questions out of 60 or uh, but they only have to choose 25 and they have chosen wrong 25 or 3 4 in those questions which they were not that much confident and they just choose it in the during the exam and when they came back they were like if i would have chosen the other three four then i would have got some more extra marks so that should not happen so limited study is also very important so don't try to you know the days which you have don't try to study everything don't try to uh, you know focus on a lot of things just try to be uh, precise try to be focused upon whatever you have prepared already or whatever topics you have studied and try to think about in, in a way that if question is asked from this topic I should not be able to leave that question or I should not be leaving those questions I should be able to do, do those questions very easily okay so these are certain points I thought of discussing in this video so that uh, you can get an idea about it and uh, like when you sit in the exam when you are closer to the exam you get more confidence from it I am quite sure that if you follow these points that is going to boost your marks and uh, next part will be coming very near to the exam where i'll be discussing about that how you can manage time in the exam uh, how you can approach questions in the exam what are the tricks what are the points what are the strategies that you can follow that can ensure good marks during the exam time all right so that's all from my side for this particular video i hope you like it and uh, do let me know in the comment section if you have any other question i will see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care